Hello everyone. So today I'm going to cover SQS events and uh, how they work with Ados Lambda and how to connect that all up with uh, this framework called Jets. Okay, so to show you that, we're going to go to Docs. And under Docs and under Events, there is SQS documentation. And SQS events, um, what that's all about is you could send a message to SQS queue and actually have Lambda fetch the job off that queue and process it. So this is really neat because essentially uh, AWS Lambda manages the scaling for you. So you pretty much have an auto scaling queue here. Um, so the cool thing about this is with Jets, uh, there are a couple of different ways to connect that Lambda function up to the SQS queue. And I'm gonna show you all three of them. First one is existing SQS queue. The second one is a generated function SQS queue. That's the same thing as the existing SQS queue, essentially, except in this case, the Jets will also create the SQS queue and manage it for you. I should note that with this uh, second option, uh, if you delete the XJS application, the queue, the managed queue will also be deleted here. Of course, with number one, the existing queue will not be deleted. Um, and number th uh, three is a different concept. It's called generate a share SQS queue. So this is useful for when you say you wanna create, have Jets create the SQS queue but you wanna be able to register multiple Lambda functions, let's say multiple classes uh, to this shared queue. It's a shared resource essentially. And it's, a, it's actually a concept with Jets called shared resources. Anyway, and here we're gonna go through all three examples and I'll just kind of show you how it all kind of works. The documentation on this for right here, I guess I'll briefly cover this example of these, these docs and then we'll just go right through with the example project. So it's pretty simple with Jets. You just uh, declare this uh, keyword called uh, SQS underscore event and then there's the existing queue name. Remember that queue needs to exist. If that queue doesn't exist in this case, uh, the deploy is gonna uh, actually error and it's not gonna complete successfully. Uh, so if it errors, you just create the queue first and you, you deploy again. Okay, and then the way it works with Jets is the Lambda functions are declared actually right underneath the declaration, the SQS, SQS event declaration. And underneath there, this method, this Ruby method gets transformed to a Lambda function. And the association just happens because uh, you've declared it right above the method. Okay, um, this is actually important. Uh, I found that the queue uh, default timeout must be less than uh, of the lambda. The lambda functions timeout must be less than or equal to the uh, default SQS queue timeout. And uh, the default SQS queue is usually thirty seconds, so that's why in this example I just basically kind of suggested use a default timeout thirty seconds on your lambda function, and this. Class timeouts and set the timeouts for all the Lambda functions that are being created within this class. Um, so that's something just to watch out for, and you just want to have that timeout be less than or equal to the uh, SQS default queue timeout. You can always increase the default queue, ta queue timeout also, but that's the default, so I figure I just... And also, that's a good way to explain that, I think. Okay, so that covered uh, existing SQS queue. Let's go to, uh, to number two, generate function SQS queue. So this one, uh, you... Uh, you specify a special keyword, a symbol, a generate underscore Q, and if you specify that, then what's gonna happen is that, that just tells Jets, I, I want you to go ahead and generate the Q for me and then uh, manage it. So that's how you do that, that second example. The last example is a little bit different. It's called a shared resource in Jets. So let's go look at the shared resource documentation. It's right here. And share resources, the concept behind this is, let's say you want to create a, a shared resource that you want to use throughout your application, uh, and you want Jets to create that for you so you don't have to worry about it. And you can go and create it under app uh, shared resources, and you can basically define a CloudFormation stack with resources in there, and then you can reference this throughout your application. So that's what we're going to do with uh, the third use case here, or third example. And the example is right here. There's a list. Oh, I should point this out also. I actually tried naming this queue. And Q is a reserved Ruby class. There's a Q class in Ruby. Because of that, that doesn't work. So I, I end up naming it list, but just don't use the name Q for your class because that's a, a actually reserved class in Ruby itself. Uh, and then um, I defined the SQS Q and I named it delete list. And then in the hard job here, what you could do is you could reference that by going ref waitlist. So this ID is tied to this. So I, I spent a lot of time here in the docs um, because it's pretty much all covered. But we're gonna do the same thing and maybe a little more briefly because I've covered this pretty thoroughly here uh, with, the do, uh, with the example of a project. So here's the example project, it's on GitHub. You could clone it down and you should be able to deploy it. And then you could send a test message here, but 
this project is actually quite simple. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build it from scratch, okay? So let's go to uh, our terminal here. We go Jets new demo mode job. So what Jets new demo does is it creates a new project. The project name is called demo. The job mode just creates a very light skeleton project. Um, so light that all you need to have is a job here. So from there, we can go hard job. We're gonna create a hard job here today. And then in here, we'll go in here and go app jobs, uh, hard job, and we're, I'm just gonna uh, grab the code. Let's grab the code. Okay, so here's hard job, that's the code. Um, let's see, here I've left this example kind of comment out just in case you haven't created it yet. Like let's say you're just cloning it and deploy it and you didn't, you didn't check. So anyway, uh, but what we're gonna do is uncomment out, we're gonna actually create that queue. So I'm gonna go in here, uh, and create the queue, and start kind of moving these windows around a little bit. Okay, so that should take care of the existing queue, because again, if the queue doesn't exist, the stacks cannot deploy successfully. Um, and here's the generate queue, so you don't want to worry about anything there, but the last one is the, um, the waitlist queue here, and this is the shared resource one. We haven't created that one yet, so we actually have to go create that. So let's go grab the code again. We'll grab it list here, and uh, we'll just grab this list and go create a folder, a new folder, shared, uh, new folder, resources, and we'll just create a um, new file, list. Remember, we can't name a queue, list, and then we declare it there. Now we are ready to deploy, uh, almost, I just have to see it in the project. Okay, so that looks generally, and let's put this side by side, that looks uh, pretty um, good to me. And I'll go through this code one more time. So. Here is the dig function that is creating uh, a Lambda function associated with this existing queue. This is going to generate the second example. It's going to generate a, a queue for you and associate this lift Lambda function with that. And the last one is going to associate uh, this Lambda function with the shared resource queue. So here's the shared resource queue in this. And remember, this ref function references this ID here. So this deploy is going to take a little more time to complete. So I'm going to pause the video so we don't all have to wait. So the deploy has finished uh, deploying. So now at this point, we could check all the resources that are supposed to be created. We could do this with the AWS console. Let's go to um, SQS. Let's go to SQS console there. There we go. Um, and it created uh, one, two, three different resources. So that's what we want. Uh, that, that's the, the Holo queue resource. Actually, I created that one manually, right? Uh, and then these are the two queues that are being managed by Jets. Uh, if you click on one of these queues, you can click on Lambda triggers here, and you can see that it's associated with a Lambda trigger right there. So when we uh, messages come to this uh, SQS queue, the Lambda function will run. We can check the other ones too real quick. Yeah, that one's connected to the job fix. And this one's connected to job lift. So let's test it now. We're going to send um, some messages to the queue. So send a message. Just click on that, and we're going to go uh, test, and we're going to go hello um, and we'll call this dig since that's what the method is going to trigger we'll send the message that's been done we'll uh, close this one we'll go to the next one now now this is the shared resource queue because i know i can tell because the waitlist right there and we'll go to uh, send message we'll send message and this time it's we're going to call it um the message we're going to say hello fix okay and then uh, for the last one, we're gonna just do it a little differently. We're gonna do it through the CLI just to be a little different, just to show you how that works too. And for that, you actually need the queue URL. So I'm gonna go and grab that. And if I, if I can figure out how to copy and paste here. There we go. All right, so I got what we need, and now we can go back to the terminal. We'll just type uh, AWS SQS send message. Uh, and then it'll be Q URL, Q URL. There is the URL, and now it'll be message body. So uh, body, and now we're gonna send it JSON once again. We test, uh, and was what's the one attached to this last one? This is hard job lift. Um, interesting. I think I grabbed the wrong one. Um, no, a lift. I guess this was called. Okay, so I guess that's the right one. Okay, so lift. We'll go a uh, hello, lift, like, okay, lift. Okay, and that should do it. Okay, so that sends a message. All right, now we um, can go check this on CloudWatch because the code just does a puts 
and the standard outputs goes to CloudWatch with Lambda. So we go to CloudWatch. Under logs, and we're gonna check all three of them real quick. We'll just go down the line here. So that's the first one. And here's the message. There's the message right there. So that's dig. Next one. Fix. That's fix. And then the last one, lift. That is lift. Okay, so let's review real quickly what we did. So we um, essentially created three SQS queues. Uh, one of them was existing queue, one of them was a function managed queue, and one of them was a generated uh, shared queue via Jets. Okay, and then we I just tested by sending messages to all three. So I think that's pretty much it. That covers SQS events uh, for you guys there. Um, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it with your friends to encourage more content like this. Uh, if you like videos like this, subscribe to this channel to watch more features videos. And uh, if you uh, like this Project Jets, uh, go to GitHub and give it a star. I really, really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Everyone have a good day.